Amen. What a perfect way to get us started with our worship this morning. A few announcements before we continue. Um, first, Palm Sunday, next Sunday, the children will be processing in from the back with palms. Uh, so we ask if you have children, grandchildren, that you meet back in the North X, the lobby area back here, uh, about 10 till. And uh, if you are able to walk down the aisle with them, we are going to be praising God on Palm Sunday. So we ask that you walk down. Maybe they can process in here, go down the sides, come back up, and then they'll stay up here for children's message on Palm Sunday. It will be a little bit different order of worship. A couple other announcements. Speaking of Easter services, we are having a reenactment of the Last Supper on March 29th. It's a Thursday night at 6.30 at our north campus which is at 65th avenue and the bypass uh, we will have child care for that so if you have little ones um, we will have child care it shouldn't be a real long service but we are doing the reenactment and then everyone will be invited to join in holy communion then the next saturday is the easter egg hunt I can't believe how fast this is all coming. Uh, March 23rd is the Easter egg hunt, also at our North Campus at the Child Development Ministry at 65th Avenue. It uh, starts with a breakfast uh, with the bunny at 9 o'clock and an Easter story at 9.45 and then the hunt at 10 o'clock. So you all are welcome to come that. If you're coming to the breakfast, you might want to call ahead. The number's in your steeple here this morning. Uh, so that they have enough breakfast. Don't ha ever have to worry about a Methodist church of any kind or any function having enough food, but you might want to, um, you might want to call ahead anyway. Also, we decided we were going to have a spring Bring a Friend Sunday like we've been doing the last two falls. We'll also have it in the fall, but everyone's encouraged to bring a friend to Sunday school and or worship on um, April, um, April, the, the date's not in there? 14. Is it in there? Yep. Last page. Last page, 14th. Okay, April 14th. Um, bring a friend. We're, afterwards, we're going to have a cookout. It should be beautiful weather this time of year instead of the 100-degree July that we did vacation Bible school last, last year. Uh, bring a friend. We'll have a cookout. We'll have inflatables for the kids out there. Bring friends that have kids. And, and let's just fill this space uh, with people to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. And uh, I also want to recognize one of our own. Barry, would you stand up? <laughs> I know you hate that, but <laughs> Barry received the Order of the Palmetto, which is like one of the highest awards that you can receive in South Carolina. Um, so we congratulate you on that. We've got uh, fame among us, so that's a good thing. All right, any other announcements for the good of the church this morning? Oh. <laughs> Jeff, would you stand up? <laughs> Woo! Just in case you don't always talk about, NC State beat Carolina last night for the ACC championship. And now, see, I wasn't even going to say anything. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, any other announcements for the good of the church this morning? Yes, Miss Cheryl. The, hey, it's early yet, so. <laughs> Sorry, it's the 28th. It's a Thursday, so uh, thank you for that. Thank you for lifting that up. Child care, yes. yes. Easter, Easter, golly, there's so much coming up. 
Easter sunrise service at 6 o'clock. If you all can get up and watch the sun come up in the presence of the Lord at Plyler Plyler Park. Yeah. Um, And uh, we'd love to have you come to that. And then maybe some of you and your friends can go out to breakfast before you come back for Sunday school and worship. All right. Are we good with the announcements now? Maybe. Maybe? All right. Let's stand and greet each other with the uh, love of Christ.
standing as we affirm what we believe as written in the Apostles' Creed this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the children are invited to come up with Pastor Donna this morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. No boys, just girls. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure we have a few boys out there somewhere. So, how is everybody this morning? Good? Yeah? Pretty soon it's going to be Easter. And I have a story from... You what? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Easter's coming later. That's right. That's right. Well, there's a story in the Bible that Jesus tells us about. It's a parable, which is a story, um, about someone who was lost. They were not maybe lost so much physically, but spiritually they were lost. God always wants to find those that are lost. But the, some of the Pharisees got mad at Jesus because he was talking like this. And here's the story he told. He said, what man of you have a hundred sheep? And if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 and go out into the open country and go and find the one that is lost until he finds it. Well, any shepherd who has a sheep will go out into the field and find the one that is lost. And the same thing is with Jesus. You know why? You know why? Why does Jesus come after those who are lost? Because he loves us and God loves us. So I want to ask you a question. Have you ever, has anybody ever broken something of yours that you felt was very near and dear to you? Has anybody ever broken a, something that you just wish they had not broken it. I know this happened to me. Does it ever happen to you? No? No one's ever broken anything of yours? You're lucky. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So she said that her mother got mad at her one time for breaking a picture off the wall, broke the frame, and I remember that picture. Well... Yeah, and there was a picture of a cat. That's right. <laughs> Mommy got mad at her for sure. So the same story about this. Do you know what this is? You know what this is? This is a cross. Like those are crosses. That's right. Someone, this is a cross that's a paperweight. Oh, we got lots of crosses all over the place. But, the, okay, all right, we got, boy, she's pointing them all out. 
So we, this is a cross too, okay? And this cross is actually used on my desk as a paperweight, so when I need to hold a book down, it sits on it. Well, this was given to me by a church that I worked in in another place. And I love this thing, it's kind of heavy. And one day, it was in my house, one of my grandchildren, and I'm not gonna say which one, because one of them's here, so I'm not gonna name it. Well, when she was very, very small, she grabbed it off my desk and dropped it on the floor and it and broke in half. It broke in half and I was really sad about that. And I was actually about to get mad when I realized and looked down at the cross, it was broken right in half. And I thought to myself, this was the cross that Jesus went to. And it, it didn't follow my toe though, no. Anyway, so the cross was broken in half. I looked down at my little grandchild, and she had tears in her eyes, and she was crying. And I'm so sorry, she said. And I said, suddenly I looked at the cross, and I thought, this is what Jesus was on when he died, and his body was broken for us so that we could have a way of being with God forever in heaven. So I remembered that as Jesus was broken, this cross reminds me of that. And so I looked down at my grandchild and I said, that's okay, I love you, we'll fix it. Well, a few weeks later, a man in the church who was good with woodwork put the cross back together for me. And you can see, can you see right there? There's a, a line in the middle where it was glued. And so every, you can see there, see the line? So every time I look at it now, I think about Jesus who was broken for us and now lives in heaven with us forever. He's alive and I want you to understand that when he was when he was crucified he also raised was raised in heaven and he lives with us forever. He lives where? Do you know where he lives? He lives in our heart. That's right. So let's say a prayer together, okay? Before we go to children's church. Loving God, it's wonderful to know that you love us just the way we are, even when we make mistakes. Thank you for giving us parents to love us and care for us. Amen. All right. You guys can go with me if you want to over to Children's Church. of the morning to all of you today, <laughs> especially my fellow lads and lassies. I will be reading Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34, from the Living Bible, and you can follow along in your pew Bible on page 691. The day will come, says the Lord, when I will make a new contract with the people of Israel and Judah. It won't be like the one I made with their fathers when it took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a contract they broke, forcing me to reject them, says the Lord. But this is the new contract I will make with them. I will inscribe my laws upon their hearts so that they will want to honor me. Then they shall truly be my people, and I will truly be their God. At that time, it will no longer be necessary to admonish one another to know the Lord. For everyone, both great and small, shall really know me then, says the Lord, and I will forgive and forget their sins. Here ends the reading of the God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
that didn't get your toe tapping. I don't know what went. <laughs> we all need to be tapping our toes for Jesus. Um, our, as we go to the Lord in prayer, there's a few people that I'd like to lift up to you before we go. Um, our condolences go out to Michelle Blythe in the passing of her grandmother, Jewel, jo, Jolene Anderson. Also to Rhonda uh, Singleton and Tom Wynn for the passing of their cousin, Joseph Standard Newton. And also to Myla Butler for the passing of her mom, Carol Pender. So please keep all of them in your thoughts and in your prayers. Let us go to the Lord. Loving God, we come to you today with praise and thanksgiving, celebrating your presence with us here today and every day, every moment of our lives. Lord, as we sing praises to you, as we hear your word, as we share in fellowship, as we plan our Easter activities, let us always be about you and your son and the sacrifice that your son made for, for us so that we can be here today worshiping you in a land that gives us permission to do so. So that we have the promise of your Holy Spirit guiding us each and every day. So we have the example of your son to teach us how to love and how to forgive. And so that we sit here today with the assurance that if we have accepted you into our heart as our Savior, that we are granted eternal living only through your grace. Nothing that we could do on this earth could ever come close to the gift that you give us of our salvation. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us so very much that you were willing to give your son up for us. Lord, at this time we ask that you hear in your mercy, that you hear the prayers that are going to be lifted up, that these prayers be taken to you with thanks and praise and concerns, and that according to your will, you will answer. You have promised us that you will answer our prayers as faithful children according to your will. So, Lord, at this time, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, you hear the many names that were lifted up, and you know the many names that are in our hearts and minds who need you. You hear the trust that we have in you by lifting these people up to you. Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you that you are part of our lives. And we thank you that Jesus taught us so very many things. The one thing that he did teach us that we now share together is a prayer to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us continue worshiping our God with our tithes and offerings as the ushers will come forward now. Lord, we know that everything that we have comes from you. So now we take this time to give back to you. May these gifts, these tithes, these offerings be used to your glory to share your love with others and to build your kingdom here on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Take your handbooks and turn to him 462. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus.
the reading of God's word in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but they doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always till the end of the age. These are the words of God for you, the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. You may be seated. When you die, are you going to heaven or not? You can know for sure. Heaven or not, dot net. Now, we're talking some fire and brimstone there, aren't we? If you haven't seen that, that's a commercial on uh, Fox Channel. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't find that easy to say to people, right, straight up front. Um, it It seems to me a little bit of a scare tactic that tends to turn people off. But... If you're comfortable with sharing the good news with that tactic, hey, go for it. You might win some souls. Or at least you're going to send them to heaven or not.net. <laughs> Craig Rochelle, in his book, The Christian Atheist, took an evangelism class at Southwestern Baptist Theological University. And he says he remembers two things about that class. They had to memorize a gospel-sharing script to recite to total strangers as their instructor watched them as they go door to door. He said he can remember the opening line. Have you come to a place in your life that if you died tonight, you're certain you'd spend eternity in heaven? He said, nice icebreaker, huh? He said the next thing that he remembers is the professor telling them that before they knock on every door that they should pray. And he said he was really good at that because every door that he went up to, he'd say, dear God in heaven, don't let anyone be home. (laughs) That's how we feel sometimes, isn't it? Don't don't let somebody ask about God. No, no. Jesus, in our reading today, Jesus gives us a commission, the Great Commission, a mandate to share the good news with others and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. But Groeschel goes on to say, when was the last time that any of us have been burdened for someone that is far from God and spent the whole night or whole evening praying that they would come to know God. How many people have you brought to church to hear the gospel in the last month? You've got a perfect opportunity with Bring a Friend Sunday. When was the last time that you had a non-Christian in your home and the plumber doesn't count? Is there anyone in your family, a friend or a neighbor, who doesn't know Christ? Have you tried to tell them? 
So his point is this, if we really believe that there is a heaven and that there is a hell, shouldn't we find a way to share the good news with these people? The thing is, most of us are a little uncomfortable, even if we don't use the heaven or hell dot net. We don't know what to do or say or how to say it. Well, Groeschel has a few suggestions. First, he says, invite someone to church. If you want to share the good news with someone that you know just isn't really ready to hear it, invite them to something other than worship service. Invite them to bring their kids to the Easter egg hunt. That seems pretty secular to me. Most people aren't afraid of being overwhelmed by the Easter bunny. But guess what? Before those kids get to go look for those eggs filled with candy, we're sharing the Easter story with them. Suddenly, you've helped God by planting that seed of the story of Jesus in those kids' mind and the parents that hang around outside of them. If you know that someone is ready to hear a little bit more, invite them to church. Invite them to a Bible study. Say it doesn't matter how much you know or don't know, we're all in it to learn more about the love of God. Invite. Invite. 83% of people who visit a church did so because they were invited by a friend or relative. Now, I'd like to think it's because of me. (laughs) But I can't take that much credit. They come because you invite them to come. They stay because they've experienced Christ. And they've experienced the love of all you guys welcoming them to be here. Invite someone to church. Maybe even add, hey, come on to church with me and then we'll go out and grab some lunch afterwards. Now, wow, that's pretty radical. People will respond to that. Take a step of faith. And invite someone to go with you where they will hear the good news of the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've got that perfect Sunday, like I reminded you. Bring a friend Sunday. Come on, come to church with us. We've got a cookout afterwards. Bring the kids. We've got inflatables for them to have fun. Easy peasy, right? All they can say is no. Secondly, share your faith story. Now this is getting a little bit harder, but we all have a faith story. Maybe you're that someone who has hit rock bottom And the only hope you had to be rescued was through Christ. Tell somebody your story. Perhaps you were searching for something meaningful in your life. And your search ended when you found Jesus. Share it with someone. Perhaps, excuse me. Perhaps you've grown up in the church from the day that you were a wee little, wee little thing. But you didn't really come to personally know the goodness of God until later on in your life. Share it. Share that story. 
people are ready to hear the message of hope. In this broken world, they need something to hang on to. And what better thing to give them to hang on to than the good news of Jesus Christ? Maybe you don't feel like you're the best uh, orator and your story, you, you have a little uncomfortableness about telling someone. Well, be prepared in a different way. Maybe you're the artist type. And you can paint a picture that illustrates what God did for you in your life. If you're into writing or poetry, put your story into a few stanzas and share it with someone. If you like music, find a song that tells how you experienced and found God's love. And share it with someone. There's so many ways that we can share our story with others. Without really being intimidated. Without even memorizing gospel. uh, the, The words of the gospel. Just tell others how God has loved you. And then third. He says show Christ with your actions. Find a way to serve God, and others will see a difference in you. Inside the church, be an usher. Teach a Sunday school class. Be a hospitality greeter, showing newcomers where they need to go for worship or other events. This is when we have people searching that actually come to the church. Find a way to serve God here and greet them with a smile. We're glad you're here. We're really glad you're here. Outside the church, volunteer at Community Kitchen. Help with Habitat for Humanity. Take an elderly friend or neighbor a dinner or take them out to lunch. Maybe they don't drive anymore, then they'd love to go out to lunch. Offer to watch someone's kids for a few hours so that parents can actually go on a date without the kids or a single parent can actually have some alone time. This is all showing the love of God through you. The possibilities are endless in ways that you can show God's love. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to take some time to serve others. When you serve others in the name of Christ with no strings attached... Well, I'll watch your kids, but you got to come to church on Sunday. No strings attached. People will notice. They will notice that something is different about you than the worldly people that are out there who are all about self. Our lives begin to look like Christ's life as we serve him, as we worship him, as we learn more and more about him. And the world is watching. There are several uh, examples in the scriptures of unlikely, if you will, evangelists um, throughout the word. But I want to provide you with one that Groeschel used as an example and I think is a perfect example for us. He uses the example of the Samaritan woman in the Gospel of John uh, chapter 4. The woman at the well, you might be familiar with it. If not, it's the story of Jesus sitting by a well thirsty after his travels and a Samaritan woman comes up and and uh, get to get water. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Jesus says to him, t- says to her, "Would you give me a drink?" 
Well, back then, the Jews did not associate with a Samaritan, and Christ was a Jew, right? But Jesus crossed that barrier. Just like sometimes we have to cross it when we love others that are different from us. Not to mention that Jesus is Jesus, and he knows the whole story of this woman, and he knows that she's already been through five husbands and and is working on a sixth. So this Samaritan woman looks at him and basically says, you want me to do what? You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. And Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. And Jesus goes on to share the good news with this woman. He tells her that he is the Messiah that everyone has been waiting for. That God wants to love even her. And that one day she will worship his God. Just like everyone will be invited to do. A woman. Back then, they weren't thought much of. A Samaritan thought even less of. A floozy going on their sixth husband. But she too was invited to hear the good news. So what does she do? That woman left her jar beside the well and she ran back to the village where she came from. Telling everyone... And saying, could this really be the Christ? And she got so many people excited about the fact that it was Christ that told her the good news and the love of God. That they all went back with her to this well to see the Messiah. Now even though this woman did not recite scripture... Even though she really wasn't the greatest defender of her faith, she could invite her friends to experience Jesus. And later in the chapter, we see the great results. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Just think how many people that God can save if we invite people to come to know Christ. We don't have to be hollering, heaven or hell. Just love them and invite them into the love of God. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us. That's a pretty strong one. Through us. He's relying on us to invite others to know the Lord. So I want to make you a challenge today. Find a way to share the good news. Find someone to invite to church. Find someone who has kids that might enjoy the Easter egg hunt. Find someone that you know needs hope. And share the good news with them. And wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever you need to say, the Holy Spirit will be with you. I want you to trust that God's got your back if you reach out to others for him. 
Amen. Let's stand together and sing our closing hymn, Freely, Freely, 389. love of God with others because God loves us all and wants us all to come to know our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now go forward with that love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen.